Hello, this will be an introductory lesson to analytic geometry. Now, I said introductory, but this, I don't think it's an introduc introduction for most of you, uh, because this is just going to be a review of what you've already learned in algebra and geometry. You might have not heard of the word analytic geometry before, but what analytic geometry really means is basically combining algebra with geometry. And you do that by using the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane. Analytic geometry has everything to do with the Cartesian plane. So using an algebraic equation like this, y equals x, you can draw graphs on the Cartesian plane like this. this. This is a geometric figure that you can draw on the Cartesian plane using the algebraic equation. So this is what uh, analytic geometry is. And you've all already seen these um, ever since middle school, I'm guessing. Now, one of the important properties uh, about graphs in analytic geometry are the intercepts. Or another way of thinking about these are zeros. When do they equal zeros? So if you have the coordinate plane here, and let's say I have the equation y equals x squared minus 1. y equals x squared minus 1. This equation is going to look something like this. Or the graph is going to look something like that. And what I mean by intercepts are the points that the graph crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. So the x-intercept would be, would be the point when it crosses the x-axis. Or another way of thinking about this is when y equals 0. Right, when y equals 0, it's going to be, right, this is when y is positive, this is when y is negative. When y equals 0, it's going to be right on this line. Right, so that's the x-intercept. And similarly, oops, similarly, you can think of the y-intercept as the point when the graph crosses the y-axis or when x equals 0. So uh, on the x-intercept, y equals 0. On the y-intercept, x equals 0. So on this graph, the x-intercept, there are actually two of these. The point that it crosses on the x-axis are these two points right here. And the point when it crosses the y-axis is this point right here. So there's one y-intercept and two x-intercepts. And using this, this equation, you can actually find the exact values of these intercepts. You can find the values of the intercepts but just by looking at the graph here because this is a very simple graph. But in cases when you have more complicated graphs, you'll have to use the equation to find the x and y intercepts. So for the x-intercept, this is the key here. Set y equal to 0 and see what x equals. So this means that it's going to be some kind of x and y is going to be 0. Right, so if you set y equal to 0, you're going to get x squared, or 0 equals x squared minus 1, or x squared is going to be 1, so x is the plus or minus square root of 1, or which is just 1. So that's why this explains why there are two, there are two um, x-intercepts. There's 1, 0, and then there is negative 1, 0. And it's pretty straightforward. This is going to be the negative, and this is going to be positive. And you can similarly find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0 this time. y equals 0 minus 1, and you just get y equals negative 1. So because x equals 0, it means the point is going to be 0, comma something, and we found that the y value is negative 1, so that's our y-intercept. 
Okay, so this is how you can find the x and the y intercepts by setting uh, the other variable equal to zero. Now the reason I've already included, or I've also included this word right here, zeros, is because when you are graphing polynomial equations, the zeros or the intercepts are often referred to as zeros. I'm sure you've uh, seen polynomial equations like this. x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x minus 1, right? This would be the polynomial. And the question might be asking, what are the zeros of this polynomial? Meaning, when for which values of x does this equal 0? And this is exactly asking for the the x-intercepts, or when the y equals 0. Right? It's substituting the 0 in for the y. And I'm not actually going to graph this exactly. But generally, cubic equations, this, this is a cubic equation because the degree is 3, and it's a positive cubic equation, it's going to be something of this form, like, like that. So it's going to have, have at most three zeros. And you can see that here. There are three points when y equals zero. Now, it might have less than three points or less than three zeros. For example, if, let me actually use a different color. If I have a cubic equation that looks like this, right? In this case, it just uh, crosses the x-axis here. So in this case, this kind of cubic equation only has one zero, and another cubic equation like this, so that it just barely touches, barely touches the x-axis, or in other words, it's tangent to the x-axis. This has two zeros. So the green yellow and orange graphs are all cubic equations, but they have different numbers of zeros. So this uh, degree, the biggest exponent, tells us that at most, it can't have more than three zeros, but it is going to have at most three zeros. So it could have one, two, or three zeros. And if you remember from the fundamental theorem of algebra, actually all of these graphs have three zeros. It's just that the yellow graph has one real zero and two imaginary imaginary zeros. The orange has two real zeros and one imaginary zero. Or imaginary zero. And the green has three real zeros and no imaginary zero. So if you if you're confused on the imaginary zeros, you don't have to worry too much about it here. We did that with uh, complex variables. But anyways, the degree tells us how many zeros there is going to be. Okay, that's enough about intercepts and zeros. Uh, let's move on to another property of graphs in analytic geometry, and that is symmetry. I'm going to draw three different kinds of graphs. Actually, I might need a little bit more space towards the bottom, so I'll draw the graphs up a little. Okay, I'll have a graph that looks something like this here. I'll have a graph that looks something like this here. And I'll have a graph that looks something like this here. Now, these graphs are all symmetric, but they are symmetric to uh, different, how do I say it? They have different uh, points from which they are symmetric to. So for example, the first one, 
This is symmetric to the x-axis. Symmetric to the x-axis because if you look above the x-axis and below the x-axis, the graph looks the same. If you just flip this graph here along the x-axis, you're going to get the bottom graph here. The second graph here, this is symmetric towards the y-axis. It's on the left side and on the right side of the y-axis, it's the same. If you flip this one over to the other side, you're going to get the other, other half. The last one here, this is symmetric to the origin. If you look from the point of view of the origin, the one on this side, or the graph on that side of the origin, is exactly the same as the graph on the other side. You can flip this over to the other side. You can draw a graph that looks like this as well. This is also symmetric to the origin, because this graph on that side the same as the graph on that side. Okay, so the, these are three different uh, cases of symmetry. And this is how you can see graphically that they are symmetric uh, to the x-axis, y-axis, or the origin. How can you check if they are uh, symmetric algebraically? Looking at our first graph here, this actually is the equation for that graph. And you'll notice that uh, for both positive and negative values of y, if you put in a negative y or a positive y here, they're going, both going to give you the same values of x because it's being squared. And you can see that on the graph here, the positive values of y and the negative values of y are going to give you the same x values. That's the positive value and the negative value. They're going to give you the same x value here. So you can test uh, the symmetry about the x-axis by plugging in negative y and y and seeing if they both give you the same answer. So if you plug in a negative y in for y, do you still get the same equation? Negative y squared is still y squared. And yes, you still get the same equation from the original equation. So that's how you can check symmetry about the x-axis. Similarly, for the y-axis, this is what the equation looks like. And this is uh, the other way. So you can put a negative x and x, and they give you the same, same values. And you put in a positive x and a negative x, and they give you the same y values. So again, you can check for symmetry here by plugging in negative x for x and seeing if you get the same equation. Negative x squared is x squared. So you get the same equation as you had originally. Now how about for the origin? So on this case, does this, this side should be the same as the other side. Or, in other words, this is when um, both y and x are positive, and this is when both y and x are negative. This is positive, positive, this is negative, negative. So when you substitute in negative values for both x and y, they should give you the same answer. So this one is actually y equals x. That was the green, I should write this in green. That was the green equation, y equals x. And if you put in negative y and negative x, so you're this time you're substituting both y and x with negative versions. If you put in both negative y and negative x, do you still get the same equation? Now you can just cancel the negative on both sides and you'll get negative or y equals x. And you can also do that for the red one. The red one actually is uh, y equals negative x. And if you plug in negative, negative for both of these, negative y equals negative negative x, you're going to get uh, negative y equals positive x. And that's the same thing as y equals negative x. So you get the same as the original. So this is how you can check symmetry about the origin. You plug in uh, both negative and negative x and negative y and see if you get the same equation.